a ceremony workshop, has published um, three books of poetry, um, and she's going to make a special announcement tonight, but I'm letting her do that. She's also won three Colorado Author League Awards, three in a row, uh, the National Poetry Federation Award, or National Poetry Federation uh, Circle Award, also. Winner Circle Award. Okay. And many other awards, but with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. And thank you. Thanks, yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here and our canceling over snowstorms and um, then showing up a whole week later. And um, I'm glad to be here. With the crystals. So, so, and I hope you all signed up to read at the open mic. You all know that that has a time to sign up.
time that if you're if you're doing a reading, it's good to start with a really short poem because then the listeners get used to your voice and then they can hear your next poems better. Um, and I love the flute, how it just affects us inside. Um, so I'm Val Zarek. I have a really beautiful website, poetval.com, and everything I write is true. Um, at least today or the day I wrote it, and at least for me. Whether it's true for you, I don't care. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true for me. Um, and and I have do uh, and I, I'm already shifting my list all around. I have, do have really, 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 really big news. I have a new book. Oh. It's called Offerings, and um, it should be in hand by Saturday or Sunday. Unfortunately, I don't have them today. I have planned on it. I have some other books, um, but I'm really excited. So it's really weird to feel caught up to myself reading today. Because almost everything, well, everything I'm going to read tonight has been published. It's been a long time since I've been able to say that. So, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to um, share the title poem to offerings, and uh, there's a backstory. Uh, I I brought my recycling outside one day, and I emptied it out, and and I had a brown rubber made trash can, and I forgot it outside. <coughs> And later I saw it and I went to get it and I picked it up and it and I was really startled because it was hot and the rubber doesn't usually get hot. And then I noticed that the sun was streaming in it and I said, you're just a bucket of sunshine, aren't you? <laughs> but it, I love this metaphor for life because you can say, am I a hot trash can or am I a bucket of sunshine? <laughs> so you can reframe it. You can reframe it your day and, and have a you know, be empowered again. And I rock, walked in the kitchen and wrote this poem. Offerings. I carried a bucket of sunshine into the kitchen this morning. How could I have missed such pleasure, such magic all these years? What's free is generous. Like the daily feathers I've been receiving. I could say finding. But they are not lost. They are the shed offerings that lift into heaven from earth with the lightness of being I want to remember. I've collected a basket of moonbeams for August in honor of the month I was born. A little bird fallen from a nest, expected to walk like a human, watching the ground to not stumble when all the secrets of magic are in the sky. I don't, I don't know. Thank you. I don't have a lot of my poems memorized, but within like three days, that poem owned me. It was just inside of me. There, is this an open chair? Mm -hmm. There's a, one open chair here. Hi, everybody. There's some chairs way back there we can drag up. Thanks for coming. So this poem is uh, one of my favorite uh, forms is writing ekphrastic poetry, which is uh, in response to art. And this was um, for uh, an, an exhibit, Jim Disney was the artist, had an exhibit at the Loveland Museum and a lot of us wrote poems to uh, his pieces. And this is, hi, Jay. This is one of those, um, was written for one of those pieces of art. And the title is Bone Games. And it starts with a quote from Fred Lamont. There is dinosaur tar in my bone marrow. Bone games. I, too, have risen from the earth. From eggs carried by grandmothers. All of us birds, our wings folded under skin. My vertebrae are made of turtle shell, skin christened by the Milky Way. 
nails translucent petals of skeleton flowers. Dinosaur tar came from my Hungarian side. We ate, we ate stone and maidenhair fern. The earth was softer, more malleable. Everything that ever was is in our marrow. Every being a word in the small form. As a lizard, I feared the pterodactyl. As a worm, I feared deluges that drown. As a baby bird, I feared the cold. As a dinosaur, I learned to fear the tar that held my feet in place. As a human, with your DNA in my bones, how can I own myself peaceful? How can I trust a cloud shadow to not be a hunter searching for me? How can I learn to trust the rain? As a being of Earth, in whose consciousness do I walk? It is a miracle we are not afraid all of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, throwing out my whole set idea. Um, so, I want, oh, I, just an aside, you know, I've been telling everybody, I'm going to read at the Our Gallery Tuesday night, and they go, Our Gallery, and I said, no, 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 Our Gallery, and they go, oh, like a pirate, like Our Gallery, <laughs> no, Our Gallery, and um, I was, there's a parrot lives in my neighborhood, and I always go talk to the parrot, and I knew this parrot 23 years, and a couple of years ago, I, I recited the poem So Ready for the parrot, and his eyes were going big, and, and, and then he started throwing sticks to me, like he made up a game to play with me after that, so he, so he loves me because I share the poem with him. But, but I was talking to this parrot last summer, and the parrot goes, Arr! And I said, what? He goes, Arr! You know, parrot's voice. And I said, does he think he's a pirate? What's going on? And they go, no, we had Wheel of Fortune on TV, and ever since he yells, R! That's <laughs> <laughs> the only letter he, that's the only letter he yells. <laughs> so, um, I had a, a a friend um, killed at in King, the King Super shootings, and um, and I wrote this poem. I I went to go to the um, memorial at the King Supers in Louisville. I brought two bunches of tulips to bring, and they didn't have a memorial there. So I realized I had to go to the fence the next day, which I had never done anything like that. And so I had these tulips in my house. Uh, until the next day, and did you did you ever smell tulips? Oh my God, I didn't know they had a scent. Like, oh man, they are just the sweetest scent. And when it was time to go to the fence the next day, I freaked out over what I was going to do to these tulips. <laughs> and I wrote this poem. I, I was I was dressed and going out the door and came back and wrote the poem. I was in a panic. I was in that grief place. I did get to read this on Colorado Public's radio, Public Radio that week. Tulips. One. My spring flowers this year are for a grave. Not a grave. A fence surrounding a grocery store. Not a grocery store. A crime scene. Not a crime scene. Ten crime scenes, a rapid fire of crime scenes in the checkout line. Not a line, a scream, a twisting fall. Two, they are tulips, young and red, and everyone I try to talk to talks 
about guns and angry men, and the dust is still in the air like ash from a volcano. And they want to cast laws, and I do too. But today's tears will become their own bullets by tomorrow if I don't open my own lips and wail. Three, they are red and young, and I'm planning to hang them as if they've done something wrong. Leave them to shrivel on a cyclone fence, as though these deaths will, little less, will be a little less painful as we watch something else die, already cut from their source. I wrap their green open stems in paper towel and water and plastic. Thank them, plead with them to be brave, to hold strong. They have a lot of work to do. And I just want to, so I'm giving you a little overview of my work, so um, I'm going to share this poem too. Um, this, I got really well known for this poem, and this poem changed my life. This is the poem that made me into a poet, and it was the week of the 9-11 tower attacks. And everybody, we were all a wreck. We were lost, we were confused, we were in shock. I was, I was packed to go to Egypt. I had, I had had my tickets for nine months and I was supposed to leave in two days and lost, lost my trip. And I started hearing people say, well, we gotta go kill somebody. <laughs> we gotta go blow somebody up and attack somebody. And I'm thinking, no, that can't be right, that can't be right. And, and, and I didn't know what to do. And I started hearing these words and I, like, I just started writing them down like I was taking dictation. And it turned me into a poet. I ripped it out of my notebook, folded it up in my pocket, stumbled around the world and read it to anybody who would listen, and which I, uh, most of you probably know I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> I, read, I, read, I, share a po I share a poem every day. I carry a couple of one or two minute poems and I, I go up to a stranger every day and say, can I share a poem with you? Uh, the Comcast, the IRS agent, um, <laughs> the mortgage broker. I'm trying to talk to her about, about mortgage thing during the pandemic, and I said, hey, can I share a poem? And I read my poem, and I heard... <laughs> <laughs> the IRS agent turned out to be a poet, too. Um, but, and I found that I, my poems end up kind of rhyming uh, when I'm up against something really horrible and really difficult. <clears throat> so, I'm walking through the world, counter spinning through the worlds, disagreeing with mass worth. I see connection to the earth. I thought we had our real solution with our conscious evolution. When along came that election, that ignored our selection. This seemed to take away our power and to make the gentle coward, the old school that seemed so scary that we thought we long had buried. In darkness, once more rose, and in our hearts we froze. Now we're being asked to hold the truth that's so apparent in our youth. We have a government hard to trust who only value money's thrust, bringing us back to the dark ages when the other nations brought forth rages and attacked our symbolic power by destroying our Twin Towers and our Department of Defense trying to scare our government. Now, we're dividing our own nation. Some say we have power of damnation, saying we can cure all evil by killing even more people. But I say, bomb them with butter, y'all. Use your hearts and feed them all. If we meet their basic needs, then through love, we'll plant the seeds. That our world is really one. Our light all comes from the same sun. Treat others as you wish to be. Through listening, we'll begin to see that we're the keepers of, our, of the earth, that we're related through our birth, the one created all our relations to come together as all nations and be our common invocation. 
to hold one dream, one thought of love, to honor each other and the ones above, to care for our mother, our sacred earth, to care for our father who created our birth. Come on, bomb them with butter fools in honor of the golden rule. That in this truth, we must stand tall. That in this, uh, oh, I forgot my last line. Ah, what's my last line? I gotta find my last line. Sorry, y'all. I've only known that poem forever. Bottom with butter. Bottom with butter. That was called Bottom with butter. That. Come on, Bottom with butter. Fools in honor of the golden rule. Uh -huh. That peace begins within us all. That in this truth we must stand tall. What a line to forget. <laughs> that was called Bottom with butter. butter. That poem uh, turned me into a poet I've been writing ever since. Um, another, let's see, let's do this one next. Let's do these couple. I love poetry. Don't you like poetry? Yours. <laughs> uh, it's just saved my life. It's changed me so much. <coughs> So, I'm writing a book on uh, grief and resilience, and there's a Japanese art called Kintsugi. And so, if you have a favorite vase, a favorite cup, and you break it, we repair it really carefully so it looks like new, so it looks like it was never broken. The art of Kintsugi is when you break something, you would repair it by mixing gold, platinum, or silver into the glue, so your repair shows. And it's, it's considered more beautiful. It has a life and a history now, and it's more beautiful. And so the title of this poem is Kintsugi, The Gift of Shattered. <coughs> How do we stop, turn, step into the glacier's cavern? The turbulence created when we shear from the familiar. How do we break in order to mend back together more beautiful than before? We heal, we heal, we reach for the glue to shield our cracks from failing, from falling into the unrecognizable. Not trusting any sacred remembering to piece us back. Not trusting the magic encoded within, iced over, needing fractures in order to thaw. Resilience cannot take hold without fractals of grief allowed in. Black armbands showing our embrace of night of uncertainty. Humans are not meant for certainty and solid but for finding again and again those beautiful mirrored lights, those hopeful stars that call us back again and again whole. This is a brand new poem. I wrote this. So this poem went to, got, uh, it, it got, it, my, I have my own press, Laughing Turtle Press, and it went to, to print at 10 p.m. on New Year's Eve. I wanted it in 2022, and I got it in two, two hours to spare. And this was the last poem that got written and made it in. It got written just a couple of days before the book went out. Days of Midwinter. This is where we are, just a little past winter solstice. Made of fire, my ancestors dine on stars at Orion's table. Sirius chases a comet's tail. Seven sisters stir cauldrons deep 
mysteries to ladder into our DNA. Remember, they chant, you are the light that returns, that is born and dies and is reborn each year. Remember, you are the walker, one who carries stories, who sings words into the ether for all of us who came before. Yet there is no before. There is no not here. We are the living stars. The light that returns shines from within each of us. Remember, daughter of fire, you are the gift, the dream, the birth of the sun each day. Choose these winter nights to dream the world the way you would weave it. Fabrics of love, it's horizontal weft. And those who walk beside as warp, vertical tears, laughter, gratitude, creation. Remember, daughter of fire, of light and dark, walk for us as we tend the hearts. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to our beloved Mary Oliver. Um, 2019, she died uh, January 19th, 2019. And um, I wrote this poem the next day, sitting in my living room by the window. And um, this one, a Colorado Authors League um, Best Poem Award. And um, she has a, a poem called The Summer Day, and there's a line in it. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Mm -hmm. This winter's day for Mary Oliver. A full quorum of snow covers my backyard in the color it should be in January, reclaiming the brown winter dormant grass that drones a longing into the back of my mind. I write this tribute poem on the day after your passing, and it seems it should be snowing. The sun bowing homage while it reads your poems, allowing you to be the one to shine today. You, of course, would give the clouds center stage that slow us into a deeper rhythm for this one day, this one wild and precious day, in this one wild and precious life. You would take time to count crows and weave ibis wings upon your tongue, seeking prayers in a blade of grass beneath a broken bottle in an abandoned city lot, your knees knowing the soil, and the wind's your voice. And for so many of us, your precious words, wild and free. Would you like two more? Is that good? Sure. <laughs> hey, I'm in charge here. <laughs> and there's a sign-up sheet for, uh, does anybody know it's a white piece of paper like this? It's in the back. It's in the back. Okay, hey. so if we have new, more people come in, you can sign. We just keep going until everyone reads. Okay. Thanks. Sorry for interrupting you. I'm going to interrupt, uh, interrupt, I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to just this really phenomenal, wonderful musician. Um, we love to play together. And we're going to play, um, we're going to play into this uh, poem together. We'll just start together. <laughs>
sky sings. The sky sings me home, where my grandmother's bones lace my own marrow. Ash on my fingers, soft from last night's fire, soft from conjuring stars, napping home. Home, not like the place to return to after my skin lays down, but that resonant river that traces my limbs, where I'm rooted, where I remember myself whole, connected, powerful, able to do more than survive. A stone from the path asks me for a carry. We share a walk for a while. I ask this elder brother how to get home, how to remember myself whole. I ask if they will remember for me and see my dreams so I never forget anymore. Brother tells me, forgetting is the game. Survival, the map of losing and finding, so our hearts can crack deeper and deeper, like stones in a sweat lodge, glowing red, cold water striking their flesh. Their hearts burst, offering the way to let go and fall home again. Every prayer should end in again. The soft ash on my fingertips, again. May I remember to look deep into the night sky, again. May I sing and write poems and light sage in the mornings, again. May I remember myself whole, again. May I say thank you, even before please. May I wake up knowing. May I see my bright path from end to beginning. May I breathe.